have so much to share about the new year, but first, a joke. The power company put out a letter saying that because of COVID, COVID and the recession it's causing, to save money, they're going to turn out the light at the end of the tunnel. No. No, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So, you know, we talk a lot here around, you know, and Trish brought it up, the fact that resolutions isn't the thing, that intention and visioning is the thing, you know, and that wanting isn't the thing, knowing it's already done is the thing, right? And that's what we teach knowing it's already done, which has to do with embodiment. And our big teaching is what we embody manifests. Whatever you embody, that's what you got. That's how it works. The cool news is, is that at any moment, you get to shift by looking at what you've embodied and saying, if this is what I got, which means this is what I've embodied, then I'm going to shift what I've embodied. And so how that shifts your focus is, right? Let's say what you, what you want, let's say, let's say you have a diagnosis and what you want is health, just to use this as an example. Instead of focusing on what you want, which is health, even though that's what anybody will tell you to do, focus on what you want, focus on who you are being. Are you being health? Are you embodying that knowing that is health? Because the deeper you embody that, the more health shows up in your life. Now, as somebody who 25 years ago had a room full of doctors tell me I had four days to live, I am telling you this from a place of real knowing. <laughs> this isn't theory for me. I have experienced what it takes to embody health. And what I've learned is it's not a one-time operation. Like what I, I clearly embodied enough health because I never went, I have never been back to a Western doctor since that day in the hospital where they told, where a room full told me I had four days to live. I said, then I'm going home. They said, no, you're not. I ripped the IVs out of my arm and I said, actually, I am. <laughs> and I went home. And I found my way to 25 years later. This has been through a process of embodiment. Does that mean I am in perfect health now? No. Because I have clearly embodied on some levels health in so enough ways where I lived. And then in other ways, I have more work to do. But instead of focusing on, I want this to occur, I continue to focus on who I am being. And in the renewal process, I get to look at this every day in terms of who I have been being and who I want to embody being. Because one of the other things that has come true in my life is that instead of focusing on results out here, the more I continue to focus on what's going on in here, out here seems to take care of itself. Now, does that mean I'm not taking any steps or actions? Heck no. You know, there is no way we would have made it as far as we have to moving to Portugal if we hadn't taken a huge amount of steps to make that happen. But each step came out of a place of who am I being in this? Now, for me personally, this isn't always easy. Maybe it would be easier for somebody else, but I have a tendency to want to get extremely angry at those who don't give me what I want. And so 
I have to constantly look at who I'm being in that as I feel my frustration begin to rise. But for me, who believes that I get to renew myself at any moment, on any day, I get to get a hold of myself, go for a walk, and just start again. Just start again. You get to do this too. You get to start again as often as you want. And the results you're getting that sometimes we judge as bad, you know, aren't always that way at all. I was watching this silly Marvel movie just last night, uh, Iron Man. I'd never seen it. I'd never seen uh, the first Iron Man. And so I'm watching this thing, and it's basically about this guy, Tony Stark, who is a young um, genius who basically, you know, is so smart that he doesn't actually care about anything and spends his time getting drunk and, and, and being a playboy and playing around and not caring, having a care in the world, except selling more stuff and making more billions of dollars. Well, pretty early on in the film, he gets captured because he does this road trip to Afghanistan and he gets captured by terrorists and is tortured and put through hell. And one of the things he notices as he's with these terrorists is that much of the equipment they have, his company makes. And so this is a pretty devastating moment for this guy in this movie. He's just devastated. Now, maybe you have had a time in your life where you have felt devastated, thought this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. Whatever it was, loss of a job, loss of a relationship, diagnosis, I mean, it just was the worst thing that could ever happen to you. And you thought, how, how, you know, how do I turn this around? How do I make things better? Well, in the movie, what happens is, is he realizes that he has not been a very nice guy, a very good person in the world, yet he had all this power to put forth. And so makes a resolution for himself, makes a decision to shift who he is into somebody who actually cares about others. And it is through that process that he develops, that he puts his genius to developing the whole Iron Man suit that then plays out through the rest of the movie. He becomes a different person first before he develops what he then works on through the rest of the movie to develop. And I think that that's true for lots of us, that when we go through that kind of hard time, it can bring, it can, it gives us the opportunity to bring forth in us something greater than we even thought we had. A greater caring, a greater uh, uh, gratitude for a life that we had or and can't want to create forward a greater compassion. My wife and I, we have a standard prayer on full flourishing life. When we, uh, when we do our treatment, we rarely, if ever, treat for anything specific. We always treat for the full flourishing life because we have found that in treating for simply full flourishing life, what happens in our lives is full and helps us flourish and thrive. And that our greater self knows far beyond us what that could look like. I listened to Ash at the beginning try to explain what, uh, what, you know, why Portugal, why we're going to Portugal, why this and why that. And the thing about it is, is it simply arose out of our treatment of full flourishing life and what that would be for us. It never would have dawned on me to do that. 
to to look outside our country. This is not. I I wasn't going to myself one day. You know, I don't want to live in America anymore. No, that never happened. This was something that simply unfolded out of and out of our prayer of full flourishing life. And that's what happens time and time again. Time and time again, we have learned that when we stick with full flourishing life, whatever is next for us will bubble up and show itself. And thus, we know to follow that because we've learned that that's what bubbles up out of an embodiment of my life is full and flourishing. Do you know that for yourself? If you don't absolutely know that for yourself, I encourage you to take the time to embrace it. Embrace the idea that your life is full and flourishing because if the more you embrace it, the more stuff will show up that'll go, wow, this really is leading me to a flourishing life. Wow, this really is growing this. That's what's possible when we really get into the nitty gritty of treatment, what we call treatment. I have been saying for years now, I'm sure you've heard me say it many times, it's about who we are, not about what we have or what we want to get. That the more we see ourselves as full and flourishing, the odds are we'll be going out to dinner, dining on wine, having those wonderful meals with friends. Because that's part of a full flourishing life, right? So the more we embody that, the more stuff like that shows up. The more I embody health, the more health shows up. The more you embody whatever it is that's for you to embody, the more that stuff will show up. For Ozu, it's being the impeccable musician that he is. The more he embodies himself and knows himself to be a musician, the more that will show up in his life. It has to, because that's what we teach. We know that's what works. So look for yourself. What is it you want to embody? And focus on that. Focus on being that. Not, you know, the doing will come out of the being. I find that whenever I do without being first, I wind up having to do again. <laughs> and something goes, you know, because there are times when I, I feel like, oh my God, I got to get this done. I got to get a move on. I got to get boom, 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 boom. And then I go ahead and do that. And then the next thing I know, something is screwed up and I'm starting over anyway. Maybe you've experienced that yourself. So I have learned more and more that rushing into something is a really, really bad idea. Even if it feels like it calls for that. I have um, sat around and let things fall apart in my life many times. Not just once or twice, but actually have done it now over the past 25 years on many occasions. When others around me have said, what are you doing? You can't just sit there and do nothing. Do something, do something, do something. And yet I have learned to do something before it is mine to do is an absolute waste of time. To do something before I am certain who I am being in this is an absolute waste of my time. And any falling apart that's going to happen is probably for the best. I mean, is definitely for the best. I haven't had a different experience at all of when something fell apart and then afterwards I looked at it and said, oh geez, I wish I wouldn't have let that fall apart. That is like never happened. So don't be afraid of things falling apart. If they're gonna fall apart and you are not ready to be who you're going to be in that, then what you're at is a renewal point. Because every time things fall apart, something new 
emerges. Something new flowers. Something new blossoms. Don't be afraid of things falling apart. It is a beautiful time for things to evolve. Not always easy, you know? Sometimes those moments can hurt, be hard, be incredibly unpleasant. But just like what Tony Stark went through in the movie, and I know that's only a movie, but I just thought it was a great story to show what's possible, how we can emerge from something as horrible as being captured and tortured. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I have to, sometimes my life can feel like torture. And I got to remind myself that this is just something means something new is about to emerge. Something new is about to grow out of this because everything leads to my full flourishing life. No matter what it's looking like right now. And so one of the things that Ash and I have done the last few years, and I mentioned this in the newsletter, for those of you who read it, that we have this exercise where we look at our vision, we look at our intentions, and then we uh, crystallize it down to one word that can stand for what it is we want to stand for, who we want to be this year. And it has been very powerful for us through the years. My word for this year is health. And when I look at that word, I don't just think about it as a word for myself and my physical being. I think of the health of my relationship with Ash. I think of the health of my relationship with my son. I think of the health of my relationship with my stepdaughters. The health of, of spirit works. I am very deeply involved in the health and well-being of spirit works right now. As we're going through several transitions and as we continue to want to build our online presence. The health and well-being of our country. Because I stand for that too in the face of political parties and anything that's going on, I believe in the full flourishing life of our country. In the health of humanity, all humanity, and how more I can stand in that place of health and well-being for all of humanity. And then the health of the planet all beings on this planet, the balance and health and well-being. One of the things I learned recently in an herbal class was that everything an herb, any healing an herb can do for you, they didn't create that healing for you. They created it because they needed it to survive themselves. That that that's that just a symbiotic thing that happens, that 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 we're our DNA is so close to each other, that the fact that that something is good and healing for the plant, is also good and healing for us, that there's a symbiosis there, and it made me realize there is no disconnect between us and everything on this planet. We are all in this together. And the health and well-being of any one of our beings affects all our beings. And so that was the stance that I've made for the new year. Ash, why don't you share yours? Well, the word that dropped in for me for this year was beauty. And for me, that word is and of course, I'm talking about the spiritual quality of beauty. So it's deep. And when I think of beauty, I think of an exquisite order and harmony and aesthetics. 
So I, I don't have any real preconceived idea of what this word beauty, this quality will bring for me this year. I'm open and I'm in wonder and curiosity and I love the idea of beauty. It brings me into a place of awe. I think I've spoken a little bit about the sunsets, or I mean the sunrises that I love to look at each morning and it makes me cry when I'm just I just spread my arms so wide and thank the magnificence of spirit for the beauty that is on, that is the creation of all there is. And with this word, as with years before, last year it was magnificence. What an interesting word in the time of COVID. <laughs> and it was so powerful to go how is magnificence guiding me in the mo in this moment? What is the magnificence here? Boy, did that lead me to some really beautiful, deep insights about what was happening in our world. And so beauty, having this word as sort of both an anchor, but also a guiding light or a North Star, being able to say, what would beauty do in this moment? Or what is the beauty of this moment? Or how can I bring beauty to this moment? It's just a, such a, a, a wonderful, it gives me such a deep and beautiful direction coupled with my own intuition in this year, as opposed to being any, you know, just sort of like, just the leaf in the wind, kind of going along. It just brings so much more depth and meaning. And it's also fun because I get to explore beauty and what it is and the depth of it and discover it in all new ways, ways I've never even thought of or imagined. So that's my word for this year. I, I'm really delighted by it. Yeah. Thanks, Ash, for sharing that. So that, you know, that's, and she shared some of the possibilities of what you can do when you take a word and you keep it in your present mind throughout the year and how it impacts who you're being and your actions. So I encourage you to do that, to we journal, we drop in, we, we sit with it until a word synthesizes, really shows up that says, this is the word that's going to carry me through. Last year it was joy. And in the year of COVID, like Ash was saying, uh, that was an incredible word to carry me through and did. And grows the beingness of who we are. There is no chance that you have passed. There is no opportunity that's behind you and that, you know, is gone. You have an opportunity to renew every moment. The new year is great because it, it's a time to celebrate and remember so many people get a chance like, oh, this is my chance to start over. But I want you to know that that chance is never gone. That we always have that opportunity, not just even when we first wake up in the morning, halfway through the day, if the day's going badly, you can go, wait a minute. This is a really good time to refocus and know that I get to start over now. In fact, I do that fairly often throughout the day. Go, hold on. Good time to start over. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I'm not liking how this day's going. I'm shifting it now. <laughs> That's what's possible, you know? And the more you get into that whole way of being with it, the more you, you are willing to dive in and believe in yourself and the power, the divine nature of who you are. I mean, because that's what it really comes down to, right? If we're not believing in, in these teachings, if we think, oh, it's only true some of the time and not all the time or whatever, we've lost the fact that we are divine being ourselves that the divine nature within you has that kind of power 
has that power, that you have that power to turn it around now. I know that's what happens to me. I forget. I forget my divine nature. I start thinking this is just a human experience and get caught up in that. So this is the opportunity for all of us this year is to not forget. Or when we do, at least remind ourselves, oh, I forgot. Now's a good time to start over. As often as you need to. There's no right or wrong to this. There's only full flourishing life. And that's what I want for each and every one of you for this year. I love you. Mwah. God is the source of all supply. Money is God in action. What I give, I receive multiplied abundantly. All that God is, I am, and so it is.